Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Selection and Initiation. This is Lecture B. The objectives for project selection and initiation are to identify the key elements of a project environment and HIT landscape, outline the needs for projects, how and why they are selected and initiated, construct a project charter, identify project stakeholders, generate a stakeholder register. We will be focusing on the second and third objectives during Lecture B. We'd like to set the context for project initiation and talk about where it fits in the overall scheme of project management. It's obviously at the beginning of the project. We're talking about project initiation, getting it started, so it's the early phases in whatever life cycle you are using in your project. Recall the definition of a project as a temporary activity with a beginning and an end, so this is the beginning set of activities. We described also the project management body of knowledge and its five process groups, initiating, planning, controlling, executing, and closing. There is an entire body of knowledge process group related to initiating, so clearly the Project Management Institute also recognizes the importance of initiating activities because there is an entire process group dedicated to the processes related to it. As a project manager, you should think carefully about the project initiation phase and how you will present that to your stakeholders. An exercise that might be helpful is to relate health IT projects to other kinds of projects, such as projects from home or work. Consider from one of your examples from everyday experience what were the actions and decisions you made at the start of a project. Perhaps you've been put in charge of moving your work department to a new building. What kinds of things would be important to you at the start of the project in terms of actions and decisions? Create a two-column table listing those actions and decisions on the left side, and then on the right side, write down how each of those decisions impacted the project's success. If they were done well or not done well, what impact would that have downstream in the project? The idea is that this exercise could possibly be useful in tying together the ideas that transcend all kinds of domains and emphasize the importance of project initiation and its critical role in the success of all kinds of projects, including health IT projects. Project initiation helps in taking a concept and putting boundaries and making it a very concrete process. You have to think logically through the entire process, including the initiation of that process, to get it down on paper so that it becomes a concrete thing. There are some basic questions to ask when starting a project. A starting point for these questions is to ask who, what, where, when, and why. For example, a who question is, who wants this project? A what question is, what's going to be produced by this project? Or what are the outcomes? Is it a service, an IT-enabled process, a product? 
A where question is, where is the work going to be done? A when question is, when is the project going to start or when will these outcomes be needed? What are the target dates? A why question is, why is the project being undertaken? Whether this is your first project or your hundredth project, ask these questions in the beginning of the project so that you can frame the project for yourself and your stakeholders. Answering these questions is intended to help you treat these issues in a systematic way. The process of answering these questions can help illuminate some areas of interest as you begin your project initiation activities. We will apply those basic questions to project management, and in particular, project initiation. What are some of the questions you might have in launching a project? Start by asking the who and what questions you would have for a typical health IT project. Next, let's look at that critical why question. Why are projects initiated? There's an entire spectrum of possibilities for you, so they are clustered here. There needs to be some need that relates to the mission of the organization. This need can mean trying to keep up with the competition, trying to get a competitive advantage, addressing problems, improving operations, responding to customer requests, or pursuing new technologies. There's another set of motivations related to external requirements. Certainly, in health IT, we need to be sensitive to laws and regulations and maintaining regulatory compliance. There can be external motivators that help us to launch projects, to conform to laws, and to maintain our compliance levels. There can simply be organizational initiatives that come about, and also a strong motivation coming from just a strong social good. All these are examples of areas where there might be motivations for launching projects. All of these examples exist in healthcare IT. Sometimes you'll find that your project may take several of these examples for the initiation of your project. Be sure to ask these basic questions. Why are we doing this? Ask your stakeholders, why do you believe we are doing this? Some of the motivations might not be as clear as others. For example, when we talk about organizational initiatives, one example might be that there are many organizations merging. It's possible that when a project is being launched, you're launching the project with the purpose of trying to merge electronic health record practices for two organizations that are merging. An example of a motivation coming from the social good might be that there's an objective to use fewer resources. There's an entire movement underway called Green IT, which addresses the motivation to conserve natural resources in ways that relate to IT practices. Green IT can save operational costs, such as electrical power and other resources. All of these are examples of motivations for launching IT projects.
Here are some examples of reasons for health IT projects. There are a lot of health IT projects that are motivated by operational improvement, improving waiting times, for example, process changes, streamlining workflow by the use of IT. There are organizational initiatives as well, such as merging of practices. These are examples of motivations that are more strictly tied to health IT contexts. We're talking about different kinds of project characteristics because these characteristics affect what we do during the project initiation phases. Have that bridge exist in your mind for how to relate the characteristics of your particular project to what you do during project initiation. Talking about the motivation for projects in terms of business needs, organizational initiatives, and so forth has been to set the stage for understanding how those motivations help you frame the activities that you'll pursue during project initiation. It sets the stage for those critical activities discussed in this unit, such as working with stakeholders and the extent to which you'll be able to specify as much as possible what the project is intended to accomplish and that's captured in the project charter. There is a natural bridge between your understanding of the motivation for your projects and the characteristics of your project and bridging that to what you do during project initiation. This slide shows some examples of the critical questions that will guide you into an effective project initiation. Understanding the champion or sponsor of your project, understanding the nature of stakeholders, how many and the variety of stakeholders you have, and the urgency to complete the project by a specific date are all important questions to consider. Funding is always important, and understanding where the funding is coming from is critical. There can be additional questions as well, such as, when do the funds become available? To what extent is there agreement among the stakeholders on what the project is intended to do? Answering these questions will help you during project initiation. Next, we will look at some of the key roles in project initiation. Some have been mentioned, but need additional clarification. We have talked about stakeholder, champion, sponsor, customer, and user. So keep these roles in mind. The term stakeholder means someone who has a stake in the project, someone who will be affected positively or negatively by outcomes of the project. The champion is often a senior manager who is willing to stake his or her career on the success of the project. This person is a proponent or an advocate for the project. The people supplying funds for the project are sponsors. The sponsors may not be the actual customers and the users may be different from the customers. Be sure to examine all the levels within the healthcare IT project that you initiate. Finding out late in the process that you've forgotten a group that will be either using your product or will be a customer of your product will cause confusion for those users.
There are important positions throughout the health IT realm, and depending on the project, individuals in these positions may fulfill different roles. In one case, someone may serve as a sponsor, providing the funding. In another case, someone in the health IT domain, nurses, administrative staff, and so forth, may be users of your project. In other cases, there might be subject matter experts and key people you turn to for information based on their specialty and their interest in and knowledge of HIT. It is important to understand all the different individuals you'll see in HIT. Some departments, such as pharmacy, lab, and radiology, will have both administrative staff and clinical staff. In a pharmacy, there are administrative pharmacists who make sure that the patient's medications are correctly distributed as needed. A clinical pharmacist talks with the patient or the providers so he can offer expertise on the clinical end. Project initiation is characterized by attention to some key deliverables and events. The most important deliverable at this stage is the project charter. The purpose of it is to gain approval for the project and formally authorize it so you can get it started and launched. It is issued by the project initiator or sponsor. This is your assurance as a project manager that this project is authorized and that you are approved for starting the project and that the funding is there and so forth. It also documents the business need or justification for the project. It's a key baseline document. It's typically reviewed to ensure that it captures the business need and all the appropriate information that you need at the start of a project. This document describes the motivation or other business need for the project. This is the document that you'll turn to later on when there are questions about why this project is being conducted, who authorized it, and so forth. The project charter is a fundamental document that serves as the basis for the project moving forward. Be sure that you're very concrete and that you have all the questions that are necessary for the beginning parts of this project answered. The project charter has a key role as a baseline document for authorizing the project and setting the stage for the linkage to the business need for the project. Here is an example of an outline of a project charter with some examples of information to include in your project charter. The projects are project specific in health IT. Feel free to add to this list and include elements that are important. It's important to include information with basics about the date, title, and so forth a summary of the project, attention to resources, project strategy, and reference documents. This is time to indicate who will fill roles in the project and define their relationships within the organization. Approval signatures are very important because this document authorizes your project. Your job as a project manager is to exercise judgment on the extent of detail in this project charter so that it doesn't become so time-consuming that it doesn't yield benefits. There are opportunities to revise the content as more becomes known about the project. Be sure to ask in your organization if there already is an outline for a project charter available for you to use. There are sources of information to help you prepare the documentation, people, the external environment, and organizational assets. The people include your champion, your customers, subject matter experts, and consultants. External environment can include relevant laws and regulations, relevant standards, what is going on in the overall business environment in health IT, and broad economic and social conditions that have some bearing on what you are doing in your health IT project. Your organization and your partner organizations may have assets that can be helpful to you. These assets can be well-defined methodologies for developing and procuring in health IT settings. They can be procedures, lessons learned databases, draft documents that you can draw upon as templates, and all kinds of reusable artifacts, not only documents, 
but also code segments, individual reusable modules, test plans. Some organizations maintain what is called a project management office, which is charged with providing support to all kinds of projects and can be a very valuable resource for you as you launch your project. Your project charter will form the foundation of not only your project, but also your kickoff meeting. All the things that you put into your charter need to be explained during that kickoff meeting so that everyone has a clear idea of what this project is, who is funding it, and the reasons why you are doing it. This concludes Lecture B of Project Selection and Initiation. In summary, we have continued the discussion around the variety of needs and motivations for projects and how and why they are selected and initiated. We can now understand and appreciate how to develop a project charter, which is a key deliverable, and how to identify project stakeholders. As part of identifying project stakeholders, remember to record that information in a stakeholder register.